absolutely. up first, right? Yeah. Right after Rapid. Then me after you, okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in beautiful San Clemente. We're so glad you're here with us here in the sanctuary out there in TV land, as we used to say in the old days. And we're so glad you're here to celebrate our wonderful service today. And if you will please stand and sing through your mask, it's okay, out there in your own living room, and join our fabulous song leader up here, Mr. Rick Dale. We're going to start off with a Ricky Byers Beckwith tune called I'm Choosing Heaven. One, two. today I'm choosing heaven today I'm walking the road of heaven right now singing I'm choosing heaven today I'm choosing joy today I'm choosing joy today I'm walking the road of heaven right now singing I'm choosing joy today I'm choosing love I got in trouble last week for saying better choose in heaven than hell, but so I won't say it. I won't say it again today, but <laughs> even though you have a choice, you can choose heaven today or you can choose hell today. It's your choice. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Capistrano Valley in, I'm sorry, back east, but this today is a beautiful day here in San Clemente. I know you're in a deep freeze back there. And um, we have 68, 69 degrees weather and a clear skies, and it's gorgeous. It's a wonderful place to live. It's a wonderful place to be. But whoever you are, whatever spiritual journey you're on, 
you are welcome here. And I'm so delighted to see so many of you here this morning during this very weird time that we're living. <laughs> what else can I say? It's a weird time we're living in. Anyway, so, uh, but we're here and we love you and so welcome home, each and every one of you. And now we're going to do the Flames of Faith, which is how we start every service. So we are all inclusive. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring those four noble truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as a path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and the path of peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner, Jody Charton lights that last candle. Let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Morning. Good morning. Let us take a couple centering breaths in through the nose and out through the nose if you can. One more. Please join me in chanting Om two times. Together. Oh. that wonderful vibration, that wonderful energy that is the divine in action. Feeling the power and the presence, knowing that God is everywhere, always has, always will be, is here in this moment. Knowing that God is all wisdom, all love, and is in and through each one here. Knowing that we are one, that I am one with this power, this presence, this love, this peace, this joy, just as I know that each one here is one with that same divine energy, that same light. And I realize for each one here today, and those who are here virtually, 
that we receive exactly the wisdom, the nuggets of knowledge that we are here for. I claim for each one that they are a vessel, an open channel for receiving that divine intelligence, receiving that wisdom, that guidance, that spark of inspiration that runs deep, that love, that peace. I am so happy and grateful for this moment, so happy and grateful for this wisdom, for this consciousness, this unity and this wholeness that embraces each one here today. And I release these words into the law of mind knowing it is already so. Please join me with enthusiasm in saying, and, and so, so it is. is. Thank you. And now, is this still on? Yes. And now we have today's affirmation. I am, am present, present with, with what, what is. is. I am I open, open to, to possibilities. possibilities. And, and so, so it is. is. And next, we have the Declaration of Principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my, my entire, entire being, being now, now and, and always. always. I, I believe, believe this, this perfect, perfect spirit, spirit operates on a law of mind that creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I, uh, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. Thank you so much, Jody. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have to tell you, I was so thrilled when I heard who was singing this morning. I thought, oh, that'll be just fabulous. I won't even have to do a talk. So let us give a really warm welcome to Michael Garamani. one act why do we lay all these traps we put them right in our path when we just want to be free i will not waste my days making up all kinds of ways to worry about all the things that will not happen to me so i just let go of what i know i don't know and i know i soul wherever I'm going I'm already home I'm living in the moment I'm letting myself off the hook for things I've done I let my past go past and now I'm having more fun I'm letting go of the thoughts that do not make me strong and I believe this way can be the same for everyone. And if I fall asleep, I know you'll be the one who'll always remind me to live. 
live in the moment, to live in my life, easy and breezy, with peace in my mind, with peace in my heart, got peace in my soul. to just be sure and I was denied the future I'd been searching for but I spun around and hurt no more by living in the moment living my life easy and breezy with peace in my mind with peace in my heart peace in my soul So uh, what did I tell you? He already did the talk. <laughs> That's exactly what we're talking about today, is living in the moment, embracing the now. I could have just stayed at home. <laughs> Those of you that have the new uh, 2022 journal, it's so great because if you open it up to today, it has uh, embracing the now and it has places for notes, we have them in the bookstore if you don't have one yet, so they're really quite, quite wonderful. So all week long, I've heard about that Mercury was in retrograde, whatever the <laughs> hell that means. <laughs> well, I found out. So <laughs> it's been quite an interesting weekend. Well, I guess that means that you're, um, Mechanical things will go wacky. So on Friday, I sat down at my computer and I, you know, put all my thoughts that I've been thinking about for the past couple of weeks about this talk today and because it's just it's so, I love chapter two, chapter two of the Science of Mind book, the way it works, the way spirit works. And uh, so I said, I put them all down. I was about, oh, two thirds, three quarters done with my talk on Friday and then you know, I uh, went to bed, and then that night, Friday night, I was thinking about all the, oh, I gotta add this, I have to add that. And I thought, but, you know, and uh, so I didn't sleep very well on Friday night. And I thought, that's okay, I can sleep in on Saturday morning. Did anyone get a call at 7.15 in the morning telling we were having a tsunami? Yeah, well, I just went, I don't care, I'm staying in bed. Uh, so anyway, that woke me up. Very early, I didn't get to go back to sleep. So I finally, when I got up, I got down to my computer, sat down, and the screen says, uh, going into sleep mode. And I thought, no, 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 no. We're not sleeping now, we're waking up, we're finishing this talk. I worked for a half an hour, I worked for an hour, I worked for an hour and a half, and I did everything that you know, I was told HP, do this, unplug that, do that, that, nothing worked. It would not, the screen would not go on. I said a few choice words <laughs> to my computer. I opened the door, I almost threw it out, but I didn't. So then when my daughter, she tells me, okay, when everything else fails, reboot, unplug. So I unplugged everything. All those wires back there and, Everything, I unplugged them all. 
and I plugged them all back in just knowing it was going to work. Going into sleep mode. So um, I cried a little bit, <laughs> sat down and I cried and I, I talked to my grandson and he says, well, Grammy, did you save your, um, save your uh, thing in Google Docs? And I said, no, I don't know what Google Docs are. <laughs> I saved it on my computer and I said, I can't get it, can't get to it. And uh, he says, well, maybe you ought to look into that. <laughs> so, so what I had to do, I went next door to my mom's and did the talk all, all over again on Saturday. And I wrote it all out and a little frustrated. And then I went to print it and her printer doesn't work. So I'm going, okay, yeah, now what? You know, what's this retrograde talking about? <laughs> so there I was. So I called my neighbor across the street and I said, are you, do you have a printer? And he goes, yeah. I said, if I send you an email, will you print it out for me? And he goes, absolutely. So all in all, here I am. I got it. Whatever this, whatever this is, it's very curious, isn't it? So, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we didn't have a tsunami. I have dreams about a big one, but I, we didn't have one. It, we had a, a few little waves and that was it. So our global th theme for the year for the Sp Centers for Spiritual Living is, God, where's my glasses? Uh, living everyday wonder. That's for the whole year. And for the month of January, that is the first uh, subject for the January theme is living everyday wonder. And I thought, well, that's kind of a funny theme. And I, when I really got to thinking about it, it's very good because we go along our life and just kind of take everything for granted, don't we? And let me tell you, putting, flipping a switch on at li on a light, we take that for granted. I was up north with my daughter and we, I, the day we arrived, the snowstorm hit, and we were out of electricity the whole time I was there, eight days, and they were out for two weeks. They just got it on a couple of days ago. But uh, it didn't matter if, if I knew it couldn't have lights, I'd still walk into a room and flip the switch on and nothing would happen, but it was, it was pretty funny. <clears throat> yes, but we take things for granted, so living in everyday wonder. I wanted to read to you what uh, Dr. Edward, who is the, um, spiritual leader for all of the Centers for Spiritual Living, what he says about this year's theme. He said, it's important to cultivate a sense of wonder and interest wherever we are and to appreciate everyday experiences of play, creativity, having a physical body, relationships, nature, work, finan finances, home, and community. It's important that we look at that in wonder. Awe and wonder are present in modest and ordinary things. And with a bit of practice and creativity, seeing the world with curiosity becomes a natural and eventually a permanent part of our worldview. This is what the Centers for Spiritual Living 2022 Global themes are all about everyday wonder of life. The weekly guides are designed to, uh, for the majority of, a, I'm sorry, majority of exploring what it means to everyday wonder through the day-to-day -day experiences and spiritual filter. You don't have to wait for something spectacular or rare to inspire us. We must develop an attitude of mind when we find wonder in our backyard, in the neighbor next door, my mom, <laughs> uh, on the bus, or wherever we are, we must open our eyes to find the everyday wonder that is there. Everyday wonder is experienced in the here and now, right in this moment. 
Spiritual living is a way of life, and it happens every moment of every day. As we apply our spiritual tools to our life, our life gets better. More good comes to us, and it comes in a constant daily basis. We don't have to wait for it. Life flows easier when we're in alignment, like I wasn't this weekend. <laughs> I wasn't in alignment with something that, that for the weekend because that, that was messed up. So choices are clearer to us. Miracles every day happen. There's wonder in every day, just waiting for us to recognize it and to be aware of it. Laos says, if you are depressed, you're living in the past. And that was what Michael sang this morning. Same thing, I'm looking in the past, no. If you are anxious, you're living in the future. If you are at peace, you're living in the present moment. You're living in the now. There is no other moment than the now. And then now, and then now. It's all we have. And the power of God is in this present moment, for sure. Eckhart Tolle says, if you get the, outs the inside right, the outside will all fall into place. What does that mean? Everything comes from within us. It doesn't ever come from without us. It's all from within. So when we get the inside right, we get our thoughts right, and we create correctly for our life, then the outside just all falls together for us. When we awaken to the truth that God is life and good is the only power that there is, then we can awaken ourselves to be healed, to be prosperous, to be happy and complete. That never comes from the outside. Our happiness comes from within us. Nobody else's responsibility, unfortunately. <laughs> if it was, you know, we could line that up. But no, it's all about, it all comes, it all comes from within. If we're gonna be happy, we have to be happy here with ourselves. And then it pours out, and then we attract happiness, right? Okay, Dr. Holmes says, here and now, we are surrounded by and immersed in an infinite good. And how much of this infinite good is ours? He says, all of it, every bit of it. That was on page 50 of the Science of Mind textbook. Last week, Reverend Alice talked to us about the thing itself. I've heard some backlash about when we call God, spirit, first cause, the thing itself. But you know, really, it is the thing itself. And that's the first chapter of the Science of Mind textbook, the thing itself. And what is that? That's intel divine intelligence, it's God, it's first cause to all of creation, it is spirit. Uh, there was a minister years ago that called it her big sweetie, you know. So whatever, my kids, one of them called it Ralph. It doesn't really matter what you call this energy. It, it doesn't matter. It's what you want to call it. But it's the thing itself, and it is there. It is there. And it is the energy and the power in the universe that is behind all creation. It creates everything, the thing itself. She also talked last week about the uh, four kingdoms of consciousness. And uh, that's one of my very favorite maps where we can follow our own personal spiritual growth is the kingdoms of consciousness. If you recall, it goes, everything's done 
to me. Everything's done by me. Everything's done through me. And everything's done as me. As me. So the first one, everything's done to me. It is not my fault. That nothing is my fault. I am not responsible for anything. You did it. <laughs> you did it to my computer this morning, that last week. You did it. We are all victims. We are victims. Everything's done to me. Sometimes we start out that way in that consciousness, in that kingdom of consciousness, where everything's done to me. You know, we don't want to take responsibility. We want to say that Satan did it, <laughs> or the devil did it, or somebody else made me do it. It, was, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. But the second kingdom is what, where everything is done by me. Okay, so this is when uh, we start getting a little taste that there is a divine intelligence out there. There is a power. There is an energy that we can use, that we can use. This is when we start to awaken. This is when we start to wake up. This is when we start taking science of mind classes. So in the 90s, I started taking, I was raised in unity, so I had the basics of uh, new thought, but uh, started in 89 um, for Religious Science Church. So I started uh, in the mid-90s of my practitioner uh, license to get my practitioner. And uh, I started understanding these sp spiritual principles, wow, and spiritual laws. They're just as powerful as gravity. I didn't know. I didn't know that. I didn't know they were just as powerful as, you know, electricity. Wow, what a concept. So in that class, my Science of Mind 100, it was, ca it was called Science of Mind 101. I had uh, Reverend Aline Kramer with me. I had Reverend Patty Truman, um, Reverend Bruce Fredenberg, and myself, and there was a lot of others. I think you might have been in it too, um, Tony, but that maybe that was later. But anyway, so in our class, we had prayer pods where we would get together. I think there was four or five of us, and we were at we would you know for the whole class ask for prayer for something. Well, I had just uh, been into the doctor's office because there was something felt funny in my heart, and so they did a uh, echo whatever they call that an echocardiogram and. They said, oh, God, you have a mitral valve prolapse, and we're going to have to do surgery and put a pig valve in there. And I'm going, what? I couldn't believe it. But I'm going, me? Why me? That's what it was. So that's what I had him pray for, complete healing, complete healing of my heart, complete healing of my, my thoughts, and to remove the fear and to go forward. So for that year, that's what we prayed on. I went back to the doctor, and uh, they did it again. They said, oh, they must have made a mistake. There's, not, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. So yeah, it was, so there. So they say we call it religious science because there's a science to proving. We, I tested it, and I proved it. This works. Prayer works. And so that was my first big Big de I've had hundreds since then, but that was my first big demonstration of truth that, you know, and so, and as a little sideline to that, what's so funny is I used to wear uh, distance glasses, and uh, I went in to the eye doctor to get a new pair of glasses, and they said, I don't know what's going on, but you don't need your glasses anymore. I'm going, yay, you know, so I have to use close-up glasses now, but, but it, it, was just, it was just such a remarkable demonstration of truth. And um, yeah, and I and traveled that path with, like I said, Reverend Bruce, Reverend Aline, and Reverend Patty. The third kingdom, what she talked about last week, when everything is done through me. Now that one, by me, that means you, oh, well, you can get your, you, put out before you your parking places and uh, you know your prayer works and all that. But everything's done through me. This is where we get a deeper concept of the science of mind, deeper concept of how 
it works, how it works. And, and that's the second part I'm talking about is how it works, chapter two. How does this thing itself, this divine intelligence, this energy, how does it work? So the third kingdom, everything is done through me, is a time for self-realization, which means simply the fulfillment of one's own potential. The fulfillment of our own potential. This is the place where all those things you heard that people said about you that weren't true gets taken away. All the false beliefs that you were raised with that no longer serve you dissipate because we are self-realized. We are divine beings. We are spiritual beings having this strange and unusual human experience <laughs> today. Yeah. This is where our faith and our truth are evident. And it shows up in our life and in all of our experiences on how we use this power. It shows up. You know, thoughts are things. We, we know that. Jesus, who is the master teacher and the great example says, it is done unto you as you believe, as you believe. He also said, according to your faith, will it be done to you? Which, same thing, same thing. How much, how much do you believe? I've heard people say, well, the prayer, you know, your affirmative prayers don't work for me. Do you believe it? Do you believe that it will work? It's the energy and the inte divine intelligence behind the prayer which motivates and creates the demonstration. It's our belief. What is our belief system? What do we believe in? Would we even doubt? No. No, we don't. The Buddha said, what you think, you become. What you feel, you attract. What you imagine, you create. I've told this before, but for years, I had a little poster in my office of a skeleton of a, a skeleton with a hat and a purse and high heels sitting on a bench saying, waiting for the perfect man. <laughs> and I wondered why. I wondered why. Well, the perfect man came along, and it was in my three grandsons, so they are the perfect, perfect man. But, um, you know, the, I have so much love from all my friends, from my male friends, my female friends, so, but I did take that poster down. I thought, wow, that's really putting the consciousness before me, you know, and it was there for like 10 years, and it was terrible. Ah. <laughs> Hmm. So when I touched my toes into the fourth kingdom, now we flow in between everything's done to me, everything's done by me, everything's done through me, everything is done as me. When we touch that point, we know that we're there. We have the faith, we have the um, divine intelligence, we know that we are an expression of the divine. That is the fourth kingdom, where everything is done as me. It is the self-revelation that I am that I am. I am that I am. And I am is the word for God, of course. I am a divine expression of spirit. I am the sacred activity of the beloved. I am. When we know that deep within our being, our life improves. We get in alignment with the flow and the universe just paves the way for us. This is one of my favorite quotes from the 13th century Sufi poet, 
uh, Jahaladeen Rumi. He says, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in one drop. The entire ocean. You're not a part of God. You are the entirety of God and all of God's quality individualized within you. You're not just a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. We are each unique. We are each beautiful. We are each special because we were created out of this divine intelligence. We are created to be the expression of light. Mary did a, a circle this morning and she, uh, our prayer this morning in our volunteer circle, she talked about each of us being the light, letting our light come through to touch other people. It was a beautiful prayer. And then I had Lorianne pray me in and I thought, well, this is a done deal. So good. She was so, it was so good. I always depend on the practitioners. Always, always, always. So what we need to remember is that we are divine, that we are beloved, and we are enough. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not enough. Just the way you are this moment of now, embrace that. We are enough. So that brings us to chapter two of the Science of Mind textbook the way it works, the thing itself, and how does it work, the way it works. So the story I told you about my heart healing was one way. And the other way, I have told this story before, but I think it's very, uh, it's one of my very favorites. I have a friend 20 years ago, I have still, he's still my friend, but I've known him for, since the 80s. And uh, he called me up from the hospital one day and said, uh, I just had, I just flatlined, had a heart attack and flatlined, and the doctors tell me I need to relax. I need to, you know, uh, I need to just take a break and not work 80 hours a week, and blah, blah, blah. He said, I'm sitting here thinking about who can I ask to go on a trip with me somewhere? And he said, and I, he, he kind of a, outspoken person, I'll say. So he said, Judy, Judy would be the one. This is a platonic relationship, and you know, we were friends. And uh, he, so he calls me up from the hospital, and he says, I wanna go, and he said, I wanna go to Tahiti. And I said, well, I've always wanted to go to Bora Bora. I didn't know if they were close or not. So anyway, <laughs> I had no idea at that time. So anyway, I said, okay, well, let's just uh, know that we're gonna do that. I said, when you get out of the hospital, give me a call. And the very next day, a postcard, postcard came in the mail for a trip to Tahiti, Bora Bora, Ratea, Five Islands, half price. Okay, so it was on, I think it was called the Renaissance uh, Cruise Line. So you would fly into Tahiti and get on this ship and go to, you know, to each one of the islands. Well, I called him up. I says, we're going to Bora Bora and we're going to Tahiti. And so we did. So it was about three months later and three or four months later, get on the, get on the plane and we go, go there. And the whole time before I'm going, I'm saying, well, I had, first of all, I had prayed I guess I forgot the most important part. I prayed that night for an answer, for, you know, for clarity on what to do, what to do. And that's when the postcard came the next day in the mail. So um, let's see, where was I? Oh, so leading up to the trip, I had said, I'm going to relax on this trip. I'm going to sit on that balcony, read books, breathe in the tropical air. I'm going to have a relaxing, beautiful time. Okay, anybody ever been on a cruise or on a ship on like that? And you go to 50 tours every day. It was like, are you kidding me? Up at six in the morning, the first four days up, 
you know, going on that island, this island, diving, you know, snorkel diving here, hiking there. It was like, <laughs> I, you know, this is not exactly, I mean, I, and you didn't want to miss anything because you're only going to be there once, right, maybe. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so on the fourth day, I got sick. And I uh, got a congestion. It was going from, you know, out and in for the air conditioning. Whatever it was, the universe said, uh-uh, you're going to be sitting on the balcony. So my friend, he went and he did all the tours. And I sat on the balcony and read a book, relaxed, had my meals delivered to me. And it was wonderful. So I got, had the both worlds. But, you know, sometimes when we don't slow down, the universe slows us down and says, this is what you wanted. So, and I didn't resist, because what we resist, we per it persists, we know that. So those two stories about my heart and about the Tahiti, those are exactly perfect examples of demonstrations on how, how the way it works. What empowers the science of mind and spirit is the realization that good is universal and we can have as much or as little as we believe we can. How much do you want? When you go to the well, do you take a little tiny cup or do you go to the well with a giant uh, tanker truck? <laughs> How much do you want to receive? It is truly all up to us. We have to be open to receive all of the good that is ours. So I ask you, what thoughts are creating your life? We heard all the cliches, thoughts are things. Thoughts create. What we think before us are created. Spirit. Spiritual scripture says, in him we live and move and have our being. And what that means is that there is a divine energy, there is a power working through us, and it is us, to create our perfect life. So only when we know the truth can we recognize and know this power and how to use it. Dr. Holmes says there's a power in the universe greater than us, available to all of us, not just to some of us. All of us, it's available and we can use it. It's only our belief that sets the limits to how much we can receive. Dr. Holmes talks about being open at the top. Open, that means open your mind, open your heart, open your soul, and let all the good come in. How much happiness do you want? How much financial abundance do you want? How much love do you want in your life? You must be it to, be, to have it. It attracts to you when you know what it is. It's the power behind it. How much compassion do you deserve? How much kindness do you deserve? I deserve all of it. What about you? Yes, you deserve all of it, all the good that the universe has to give to you. You must remember it is done unto you as you believe. I think it's time we say our affirmation again. I'll say it and you repeat it. I am present with what is. I am present with what is. I open to possibilities. I open to possibilities. I know that some of the biggest blocks and some of the biggest obstacles to our truth are our, our unforgiveness, our judgment, our resentment, our anger, all those things block the flow of the universe. Ralph Waldo Emerson says, let us take our bloated nothingness 
out of the path of divine circuits. Let us take our bloated nothingness, that is our small s self, small self. Let us take ourselves out of the path of the divine circuits. The divine circus is that alignment of the universe where we know when we're there. I mean, everything goes perfect. Everything just goes right. You remember Lisa McClure and Kate who were here, she ran our youth, and um, April, May, in uh, Feb uh, March, she came to me and she says, Judy, I really need a change in my life. She says, I think I want to move back to uh, Sandwich, Massachusetts, where my family is. And I said, well, have you put the intention out there? And she said, well, no. I said, well, let's just, just do that. So we worked a little bit on that. And, you know, I said, and be ready to have it come to you. Be ready for that. So she, we prayed, she prayed, she put her intention to move, had no idea how it was going to happen, and all of a sudden it happened. And on May the 30th, I took her and Kate to the airport, and they flew back, and they've been there ever since. It happened. She says, called me up one day. She says, oh, my God, it's happening so fast, <laughs> so fast. I said, well, hold on, because here it comes, you know. Watch what you want. Be sure you know what you want before you put it out there, because it comes, it comes. So she was a per it was a perfect example. Emerson also said that God was best understood as spirit, an ideal, a breath of life, everywhere and always filling the world with inexhaustible power of the divine presence. Inexhaustible. You can't use it up. You can't use it because you're using so much of it, Kathy, I can't use it. No, that's not the way it is. It's always just like love. It just keeps expanding and growing. There is a power in the universe greater than you are and available to us all, and we can use it. There are many times in my life situations have happened where I couldn't see the forest for the tree. I um, would do my own prayers and my own uh, spiritual practices, and I and I couldn't I couldn't see see clearly. So I call up Pam, and Pam puts me on the prayer list. We have the most wonderful practitioners at this center, and friends that have prayed for me. So on November 22nd, I got a biopsy done on my leg, and I had a malignant melanoma. I want to show you this pretty cast I have. Isn't that lovely? It'll be on there another six weeks. But uh, So in December, I had it removed surgically. It still bothered, you know, they said, oh, they got it all, and there's a big giant hole in my leg, and I really didn't care because I wear long skirts. You know, you aren't going to see my legs anyway. Um, and, but I, I, I didn't feel that truth within me. So I called, I said, put me on the prayer list. Pray for my uh, results of this test. So the biopsy came back afterwards and everything was clear. But I wanted to be extra sure. So I have uh, a friend who's a Sufi. She put me on her Sufi list. My friend who's a fundamental Christian, they put me on their prayer warrior list. And so I had the whole universe praying <laughs> and knowing the truth of my health. So. Um, on the 14th of January, I went to an oncologist, and I had a PET scan. And uh, many of you were praying for me. And uh, I went in at 2 o'clock. I just wanted to be sure. And at 5.30, the doctor called me. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at his name on my phone. I'm going, this can't be good because they're calling me. That must mean there would be something, you know. No. He wanted to let me know so I wouldn't have to worry all weekend that everything was perfect, that there was absolutely no cancer cells throughout my body. That was because of prayer. Uh, many of my friends prayed for me, all the practitioners. Thank you so much. Thank you for knowing the truth when I couldn't see it. So, okay, let's see. Oh, I'm really going late here. Oh, my goodness. I wanted to... Uh, just read one final thing for you before I quit. <laughs> it's 
It's so important, you know. It's all so important. So in the second chapter, The Way It Works, Dr. Holmes says this. This original life is infinite. It is good. It is filled with peace. It is of the essence of purity. It is the ultimate in intelligence. It is power. It is law. It is life. It is in us, and it is the inner sanctuary of our own nature, hidden perhaps from the objective gaze. It's nestled in the seeds of perfection. That is who you are. You are nestled in the seeds of, per of perfection. We are perfect spiritual beings, and that's the way it works. Thank you. And now, once again, Michael Garamani. Let me see the world with clouds. Take me to the world. Out where I can push through crowds. Take me to the world. A world that smiles with streets instead of aisles where I can walk for miles with you. Take me to the world that's real. Show me how it's done. Teach me how to laugh, to feel. Move me to the sun. Just hold my hand whenever we arrive. Take me to the world where I can be alive. Let me see the world that smiles. Take me to the world. Somewhere I can walk for miles. Take me to the world with all around things growing in the ground where birds that make a sound are birds. We shall see. shall have the world. I won't be afraid with you. We shall have the world. I'll hold your hand and know we're not alone. We shall have Thank you, Michael. So beautiful. What a future you've got. 
Yun. <laughs> oh. Thank you. It's time for our offering now. And you know, I just wanted to say, for me, um, it's one of my one of my p most powerful spiritual practices is to give to the place where I'm spiritually fed. It is uh, it works for me. It's worked for me my whole life. The more I give, the more I receive. It just it just keeps going round and round. And you know, we can't ever outgive God. And uh, so I just want you to know that this center is uh, fully supported by your love and your gifts. So we take your gift in your hand, please, and let us do our affirmation together and really feel these words. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply, and it symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. You can drop off your, uh, your gift in any of the baskets by the doors. If you're watching us online, you can uh, send a check to the center, or you can go to our uh, website, cslcv.org, and there's a place you can donate there. And I thank you so much. And now, Diane. Thank you, Judy. So today, we are featuring Mr. Bill Dixon. Stand up, Bill. <laughs> and um, on a fun little tune called All About That Bass. Genevieve's at Kesby. 
Wow, that was great. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. And thank you our, to our guest drummer, Ray, and of course, Ed, and our wonderful Diane King Van, our music and choir director. We are blessed. We are so blessed. Thank you so much. I want to thank everybody who um, has been a part of this service, uh, pulling all the strings behind the scenes uh, this week. If you will please stand so we can recognize you and to acknowledge you. Thank you. We have Gina Caruso on the camera this morning and with Clark in the back and Dave and Mary and Josh. It takes a village, it takes a village to put us all together. Then of course we have our practitioners. And I'm telling you, they're great. And if you need prayer, we have two tables in the back. Uh, you can go and talk to one of them today, and they'll put a prayer request in for you. And then we, as all the practitioners and ministers, will be praying on your prayer all week long. Uh, there's also um, our practitioners are today are Jody Sharton. And Mary Casa has been holding the consciousness, the high watch, for each one of us. So what she's been doing is back there is just sitting there praying that all of us are receiving everything that we need to get us through this week with a smile on our face and let our light shine. So we want to thank. We thank you, Rick, for being our song leader today. Let's go, Rick. And now, um, why don't we have some invitations? Why not? <laughs> Look at all these things. Well, today is Tsunami Sunday, so <laughs> let it wash over you. Conscious Connection will meet today after the service here in the sanctuary to discuss the message we heard here today. The Wednesday morning book study meets on Zoom from 10 to 11.30 a.m. The book currently being studied is Conversations with God, Book 2. Please feel free to join the group any Wednesday. Shifting Sands meets on Thursdays on Zoom. From 10.30 to 12.30, members of this group take turns presenting a topic for information, inspiration, and discussion. Everyone is welcome to participate. If you are seeking a way to feel more connected and supported, this may be the group for you. Coming Home to Spirit is another support group led by Joyce Fournier that gathers on Zoom at 8 a.m. on Friday mornings. Members in this group can share the joy and the challenges of their lives in an environment of support and compassion. There are still a few spiritual journals for 2022 available in the bookstore. Classes with Reverend Alice will begin again on February 1st. Woohoo! The class is an accredited science of mind class titled Basic Skills for Living an Authentic Life. The universal principles taught in this class are applicable across all walks of life. This is a great way to introduce people to this philosophy in a non-threatening fashion. There will be a Tuesday morning class that meets in person and a Thursday evening class on Zoom. Sign-up sheets are on the kiosk and on our website. And lastly, it is a new year, a new you, and a new us. Are you interested in being part of a dynamic leadership group devoted to being good stewards of our center? Nominations to the Board of Trustees are now open. Two positions on the board are opening this year. New members will be elected at the annual membership meeting on February 27th. Our Board of Trustees serves a vital role in the life of this center. If you have any interest in serving in this capacity, see our Board Secretary, Marge Hobbs, to request an application. Take one home, read it over. If it feels right for you, Complete the application and turn it into Marge or to Mary Brogdon by the due date of February 4th. And that is the invitations. Let's rise and sing our little hearts out. One, one more. Uh, um, we have a practitioner meeting today at 1 o'clock on Zoom. So you practitioners and ministers, remember that. Thank you. I see you. Oh, I see you. For the light that you are, I see you for the love that you are, I see you for the light that you are, I see your light, I see your love, I see who you are. Oh, I see you for the light that you are, and I 
After me, I am open and receptive, open and receptive. To, the to the abundance that is mine, to have and to share. To have and, to share. and so it is. Yes. So it is. Thank you. 